So I think there are two main reasons why I'm interested in the foundations of quantum mechanics. The, the first one, the one that got me hooked to begin with, um, and the one that's always fascinated me, is this, this incredible mix in quantum mechanics of, of what you might call the sublime and the ridiculous. Okay, so quantum mechanics is this mathematically formulated theory, and it turns out to be fantastically accurate in this whole range of, um, of situations and, and applications. One of my favorite examples is uh, something called the Lamb shift in the electron, which is a particular quantity that we can measure. And it turns out that if we use quantum mechanics, we can predict this number, um, this, this property of the physical world, to some amazing accuracy. In fact, it's something like one part in 10 to the 10 we can do, which is like having a theory that predicts the width of the United States of America to the accuracy of like a human hair. Okay, so it's this fantastically accurate theory. But on the other hand, we know that it says these amazingly crazy things about the world. We have these Schrodinger cat states. We have the possibility of having chairs and tables in, in superpositions of radically different states somehow both existing at the same time. And then again, we have these strange features of quantum mechanics like entanglement or this spooky action at a distance. And, and so it's this mix of an incredibly successful empirical theory but nevertheless, one that we just don't understand at the most basic level, and that really fascinates me. The other reason I'm interested in quantum foundations is actually what I'd really like to be doing is I'd like to be doing quantum gravity. I'd like to be understanding the earliest evolutions of the universe. I'd like to understand where did the universe come from, the Big Bang, all these questions. But it turns out that we don't really know how to make quantum mechanics and gravity talk to each other. We don't know how to find a theory that unifies these two things. And, and my feeling about that, and the feeling of many people, is that the reason we can't do that is because we just don't understand quantum mechanics well enough. There's something about quantum mechanics that eludes us. Um, and so one of my hopes for, for studying quantum foundations, one of the reasons I'm interested in it, is this hope that if only we could understand quantum mechanics better, then we'd know how to do quantum gravity and we'd be able to ask the really interesting questions. So that's a difficult question because it depends in some sense on the application you have in mind. But I think for me, the theory that, the, or the formalism that best encapsulates what quantum mechanics is really about is the path integral or the sum over history's formulation of quantum mechanics. Um, I think it's a very elegant theory. It, 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 it looks like a very natural way of expressing quantum mechanics. It also very naturally generalizes. I can talk about single particles, or lots of particles, or relativistic particles, or I can even talk about fields and space-time. And I can write all these different quantum mechanics of all these different systems down in a way that looks very similar for them all. So I can write them all in a very neat way. Um, and I think one of the big lessons um, of, of the physics of the last 100 years is really you shouldn't start writing down approaches to physics that can't be generalized to relativity or gravity. Um, and so one should always start with this idea of, about unity, of trying to write down the most general thing one can, one can do. And so I think the path integral approach comes best to, uh, it comes closest to expressing that idea of unity. The other reason I like the path integral approach is, in my own research, I'm fascinated by questions in quantum theory that, that don't involve statements about a single moment in time. So if I want to know where is the electron now, in quantum mechanics. I can do that in, in any formalism of quantum mechanics you want to write down. I know how to answer that question. But if I want to ask a question like, did the, did the electron ever go through some region of space-time? Um, and that might be a region of space-time where there's a detector, or it might be just some region of space-time I, I choose and write down. But if I want to answer those types of questions, so questions that aren't about the state at a single moment in time, I think really the only way to do that is via the path integral. So I think that the path integral is a natural starting point for quantum mechanics because it allows you to think about more general theories, but it also allows you to ask questions that you just can't ask in other interpretations of quantum theory. I think the most pressing problem is to understand how to apply quantum mechanics to a statement about the whole history of a system. So it's really important when you have a closed system. So if I have a, a, a box with some particles in it and I, I don't open the box, I don't do a measurement, I don't look and find out what the particles are doing, I'd nevertheless, I'd like to be able to say something about what happens in that box. I'd like to be able to say, for instance, if the particles were all initially concentrated in one corner of the box, then what's what would happen is that they'd spread out. 
Okay, and that's not a question about the state at any one moment in time, it's really a question about the whole history. And these, these questions become really important when I want to do the quantum mechanics of the whole universe, or the quantum mechanics of cosmology. They're really the, the only things I, I should allow myself to talk about are histories of the universe. And so I think the most pressing problem is to understand how I can do the quantum mechanics of history. What does that look like? What, how do I talk about probabilities in, in such a theory like that? Um, and, and of course, very related to that problem is, is the central problem, if you like, in, in foundations of quantum mechanics, which is to understand how to remove the observer. Um, and, and really, all problems in quantum mechanics come back to this problem of how do I get rid of this observer? How do I get rid of this reliance on the notion of measurement? Um, and, and of course, everyone's approach to the foundations of quantum mechanics is really trying to ask the same question ultimately, but I think it's very helpful to think about that from the point of view of looking at histories of a system and understanding how to, how to deal with those as fundamental objects.